And welcome back to the world of powerboating in paradise with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. This is Stu Jones, and we are going to continue our coverage of the epic Key West Poker Run 2020 edition, celebrating 28 years of this signature Poker Run event that this year will feature 160 teams down from the previous year, which was 260 teams, of course, all attributed to the challenges of the ongoing pandemic. So before we continue coverage, let's thank our sponsors. Let's begin with our 2020 series sponsors, including Deep Impact Custom Boats, their sister company, Blackwater Boats, and their exclusive worldwide dealer, Plantation Boat Mart. Together, these three companies offered the grand prize sponsorship, a $25,000 prize to the top winner of the poker run. And continuing our 2020 series sponsors, Mercury Racing, Wide Open, Mystic Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, and Superior Communications, our second prize sponsor. In addition to those series sponsors, we'd like to thank these feature sponsors as seen here on our Key West 2020 masthead, including our marina partners, Hallover Marine Center, Grove Harbor Marina, as well as Black Thunder Power Boats, Good Boy Vodka, Marine Concept Motorsports, Conk Republic Seafood Company, and Concept Boats. So let's pick things up as we rejoin the group. The Wednesday departure now, this is day one of this five-day event, and uh, we are catching up with the boats as they now depart Miami. We had about uh, 65 to 70 teams originally on the roster for today's departure, but with the questionable weather conditions, uh, cloudy skies, and the looming uh, Hurricane Ada off in the Gulf, uh, some of the teams decided to stay back. But we got Chris Colson from New Jersey here as we set up our powerboat parade here at Rickenbacker Causeway. Thanks to Zip Zap Power, uh, our good friend Ked here on the camera, or quite possibly one of the Zip Zap crew members, not really sure. But uh, they got themselves situated on this old broken bridge here at the Rickenbacker Causeway, catching the teams as they filter through the Rickenbacker. Remember now they're just getting out of the downtown Miami area and looking off in the distance, it's open water here on Biscayne Bay. Time to hit the throttles, and they're gonna run straight through Biscayne Bay on about a 45 mile stretch right into Key Largo. And here's a super cool Nortec. You're only gonna see one or two of these ever built so far. It's a 56 center console with Cummins turbo diesels. It's not actually registered for the run. He just came out to spectate today and check out the poker run teams as they depart here from Miami. But what a cool looking ride. And here's a great shot of a couple of cats coming in hot. Now, that's, of course, downtown Miami, back in the distance, Brickle Key. And the boats have just come out of an idle speed zone, and this is their last little section where they can get on the throttles and run hard to the bridge. They're going to idle speed through the bridge and then get back on it as they head down through Biscayne Bay. And let's say hi now to Robert and Chrissy Lockyer from the UK. It says Florida. Well, that's because they have a home in Pompano Beach, not far from our residence. And they've been active members with the club now for about five or six years. But this is their first event with this Mystic Cat. And let's welcome for their very first event with the club, Team Raging Bull, father and son team, Sam Gabriel and son Matthew, just 22 years old. Uh, apparently mom and the sister flew down. Of course, we've all seen this 48 MTI on Florida Powerboat Club runs in the past, but they are the proud new owners. And one of our safety boats now, Captain Joe Balistrieri from Lighthouse Point, Florida, in his 33-foot Everglades, and two of our Miami-Dade Fire Rescue medics on board. I really love this new camera angle from Zip Zap Power. You can see somebody coming in hot, a couple of cats, followed by two or three V-bottoms, and, you know, this is a long lens they're using, so it's compressing about a mile and a half of boats into what appears to be two or 300 yards. And I think that's what gives it such a cool look. Let's say hi to Michael and Sarah Howe, who've done a great job of representing the club this year. They've been on a lot of runs, but they're very proud of their new MTI 390X, uh, powered by twin Mercury Racing 450Rs. And what a great year they've had so far. Now let's say hi to Devin Wozencraft. He came a long way to be here all the way from California. This is a 2015 30-foot Douglas skater. Uh, he's been on this run before, but it's been as far back as 2017. He says he's happy to be back. It's one of his favorite poker runs on the circuit. Go. 
and I'm very pleased to be welcoming back my good old friend Robert Jenkins. Uh, Bob has been with Black Thunder now for over 30 years. The new owners, uh, Tim Doran, said, let's get this 46 back on the waters. This is a brand new 460. We call it the 90 MPH condo, powered by Mercury Racing 700s. And another newcomer to the event, Seth Therian in Crush Grooving, 2007, 38 Donzi. He loves the boat. It's first time here on the Key West Poker Run, and he is so excited to head to Key West. I really love how this segment is coming together, guys, because remember, we haven't had the luxury of doing the poker cards dockside because of the wind today and because of a very tight schedule getting all the teams down to the keys. So these bridge segments allow us to introduce our teams and uh, get a closer look at this amazing poker run fleet. Chris and Lindsay Miller on the left with that uh, Spectre 30. Don and Donald Haddon in that 30-foot AMT catamaran uh, powered by Mercury Racing Outboards. Of course, illustrating the tremendous amount of variety in the different styles of boats that we have on this poker run every year. It would be hard to believe that there's no actual rain in the forecast when you look off at that horizon, a uh, very cloudy looking horizon, but uh, otherwise the weather seems to be holding out. Chris and Shelby Mattingly, their second year in a row now in this 46 foot Outer Limits team, never enough, a boat that we saw a lot up in the Destin area until they got their hands on it and they are enjoying these poker runs in South Florida. They're a long way from home, which is Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And the first time for this crew on the Key West Poker Run team, Spinal Armor, Wally Wolanski from Buffalo, New York. It's a 37-foot axopar, and I want to say it's probably the first axopar we've ever had on a Key West Poker Run. This one has a very special feature. It's a gas-powered blender on board. And just a few stragglers here rolling in hot. Uh, John Wittenberger in his 39-foot cigarette. Not his first rodeo with the club. He's been on so many of these Key West events, but it is the first time for this brand-new cigarette team on the rocks. I got a chance to ride along. And let's say hi once again to Mike DeWitt uh, from Indiana. Not his first time on the Key West run, but it is the first time in this new Wright Performance 360 Cat powered by Mercury Racing 450Rs. This Wright Performance is an exclusive to Performance Boat Center, one of our sponsors, and they have the best showing on this run ever. And our last couple of teams passing underneath the Rickenbacker Causeway and carving their own course, so to speak, not going through the main channel. John Wittenberger Jr. back there in the Spectre, and that's the Genucci family in their 39-foot cigarette Top Gun. And it's the time that we've all been waiting for, and that is the open bay waters of Biscayne Bay as we catch up now with Tommy Frun from New York. And he's having fun in his brand new MTI 390X uh, catamaran powered by Mercury Racing 450Rs. These boats are really taking the poker runs by storm. I mean, this style of boat in general, the outboard cats, uh, really across many brands, three or four different manufacturers with good representation here on this event. But MTI honestly is just killing it with this. Well, it was the 340, the predecessor, and now the 390X. Such a popular boat, and they have got orders backed up for many, many months. And I think it just illustrates the popularity of the MTI brand, for one, but also the marriage of that Mercury Racing 450R that has made this such a great package. And they also keep coming out with outstanding graphic packages. I just love the gray with the yellow highlights on this design. So I want to congratulate Tommy on his new boat. Uh, it was an upgrade for him from his 34. I know he's very happy with it. And we're going to see plenty more of these new 390X models on our Florida Powerwood Club events. And getting this super cool uh, camera angle from the tail section of this R44 helicopter flying with coast to coast helicopters as we now catch up with Johnny O'Laughlin from Long Island, New York, longtime supporter of the club. He joined back in the mid 90s and I can't even believe how many boats he's had in between, but just loving this 390X. So it's no coincidence that he's here right now. He's actually good friends with Tommy Frun, who we just saw in his 390X, and Johnny is just loving this boat. And here's a guy who's had so many catamarans, he knows what he likes, and he just can't stop talking about, in fact, raving about how much he loves the performance of this MTI 390X with the reliability of those Mercury Racing 450Rs. <laughs> 
And another cat and another happy customer, Robert and Chrissy Lockyer in this Mystic 40, their first time uh, on the poker run with this new boat. They've been on a lot of runs with the club before, owning skaters and a multitude of other boats, including center consoles, but just took delivery of this Mystic C4000 Cat. Uh, it's powered with Mercury Racing 400Rs, and I know that there's a new version of this boat that just came out. John Koska was telling me about it. Uh, he's actually running one now and getting great results. It's a carbon edition, so it's much lighter, and for a boat this size, that's going to really help in the performance. John's going to be getting a lot of orders for those as that boat gets more popularity for sure. But want to thank Mystic for their continued support of this club. And a really big shout out to Robert and Chrissy here because they travel around the globe and they somehow manage to find their way to the Key West Poker Run every year. So thanks, guys. With family in the UK and a home in Boston and a home in Pompano Beach, there's a lot of places you could be, but you choose to hang out with the Florida Powerboat Club. So we appreciate that very, very much. And just another check on the weather. You know, you see some little traces of blue skies coming through when we look out to the east there, out over Elliott Key. Uh, but looking south and to the southwest, it's still kind of ominous and cloudy and gray, but the rain is holding off. And while the winds are still pretty high, you know, 18 to 20, uh, gusting even higher, you know, that's the beauty of running in the bay waters. Uh, even when it's 68 foot seas out in the ocean, we still have the protection of the Florida Keys. You can see Elliott Key there off in the distance uh, that is protecting us from those ocean swells. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue and Fireboat One, part of our program today, the safety management program. Uh, they like putting on a little show for us right here at the East Feather Beds. That is a point along this course where we have to narrow it in and go through this narrow bank uh, between the red and the green markers before we can open things back up into deep water. Very critical that you do navigate safely through Biscayne Bay. Even though it appears to be open water the entire way, it really is not. There are some skinny sections here beyond these markers, uh, and at low tide, you could hit bottom and have a serious impact uh, with the sandbar. So that's something that we want to avoid at all costs, and that's why it's still important to navigate using your GPS. And when all else fails, just follow those white trails. And I'm guessing as we catch up here to Frank Lovato in his Cigarette 42X powered by Mercury Racing 1350s, some of you guys out there are saying, well, Stu, where's the roar of the offshore? Well, the newer Mercury Racing engines and outboards are much quieter than they used to be. When you get to the old school boats like this skater, that's when you're going to hear the horsepower. Well, indeed, that is some big horsepower. Kelly and Anna Crace all the way from Arizona. And yes, they trailered it 2,550 miles one way and trailered it back home after the run. This 2009 36 Skater is a perfect example of a boat that went from mild to wild over several years. Uh, Kelly transformed it from Mercury Racing 525s to big 572 inch supercharged engines. And it has already clocked in official speeds of well over 180 miles per hour at the Lotto Shootout on the three-quarter mile course. That is one fast ride. And time now for one of my favorite cigarettes on the run every year. A father and son team, Frank Sr. and Frank Jr. Janucci in their Cigarette 39 Top Gun. Mercury Racing 700s with Whipple Stage 4. Approximately 900 horsepower per side. Just listen to this beast roar. I've got to say, guys, you did a fantastic job on this boat. It was completely redone in the previous year. New interior and obviously the engine upgrades, and they promise more upgrades coming soon. And it's kind of like a, in some ways, a Project 1080, and they did it completely their way. And the reason I say that is that when you own a boat like this, you can just keep making it better. And instead of selling the boat and starting off new altogether, I think these refinements in power and in terms of the paint and graphics and the interior, they just keep making that boat a bigger and better expression of what you're all about and what you like about your own custom cigarette. And that's why I love what the Chinucci's have done with their 39 Top Gun. 
When asked in their video bio what's their favorite thing about power boating, it's going fast with good company. Well guys, I think you came to the right place. And with Frank Lovato running alongside, I would say that this is today's money shot. So while those front runners leap ahead towards Key Largo, let's go back in the pack here and get back on board with Chris Villar on this Nortec 390 Team Real Gus, along with a number of other center consoles that they're riding along with. So this is gonna be more of a casual 55 mile per hour ride. And I think this is what so many of you have learned to enjoy because it's not all about going wide open throttle at all the times. You know, the poker runs have something for everybody. And if you just wanna sit with your girl and just enjoy the ride and the scenery, weaving through these mangroves here at Jewfish Creek. The center console is the way to do it. And I'm really proud to see how far this club has come. In fact, our sport has come in terms of creating so many different opportunities for people, depending on what their needs and what their wishes are. Some people love going 100 miles an hour and being at the front of the pack. And some people just like seeing it cruising, you know, with their friends on board a big center console where you could have 10 or 15 people comfortably. So when you arrive at Gilbert's on your center console, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of boats already there because these guys went hammer down and they got down there really fast. But it's not a race and you don't have to get there first and you don't get any prizes for being there first. So I think that just taking your time and enjoying the ride is exactly what everyone should plan to do on these poker run events. Here now at Gilbert's Resort in Key Largo, it appears from up here that the majority of the boats today have settled in here, but some of them have continued on to Marathon. That was always the plan, uh, to have at least two lunch stops on this Wednesday run. And that's because we originally expected well over 80 boats, and we didn't want to cram 80 boats here into Gilbert's, although we have done it in the past and we could. But the idea was to put some of the boats here and the rest of the boats in Marathon for lunch and for fuel. Uh, it looks like Todd Amandus is going to keep on running down. And the other location in Marathon today is going to be on the Boot Key side, uh, not Faro Blanca Resort because they have been closing their restaurant due to COVID. So there's no uh, facilities there that we can really use for lunch. So we're going to go around on the Boot Key side, which is the ocean side, and uh, use a couple restaurants there, including Lazy Days and Burdines. And some great flying from Andre Alvarez, our drone pilot today at Gilbert's as he picks up a lot of the teams making their way through Gilbert's uh, Spinal Armor. The very first Axle Par that's ever attended one of our events before, uh, Twin Mercury Racing 400Rs, a, a nice power package indeed. And as uh, Wally tells me, it's got a pretty kick-ass sound system as well. So I think it's a great boat for doing exactly what they're doing. And that's just chilling out at the back of the pack cruising along at about 50 miles per hour with all your friends on board. And for many of us, uh, escaping COVID uh, for the first time. Remember, it's November now, and we've been on lockdown since, what, about mid-March, if I recall? So I guess that's seven months, and I think most people are just so ready to get out. And that's why we still managed to get 160 boats for this poker run in November. We thought it would be a lot less. Black Thunder Offshore joining us as they did many, many years ago. This is their newest and greatest creation, this Black Thunder 46 EC raised to deck, Twin Mercury Racing 700s. Love the graphics with the black and the red and the white. And I decided, well, I haven't been on a Black Thunder for a while, so I jumped on board for the ride. We're gonna see more of that ride down a little bit later, but let's stick around here at Gilbert's and take a closer look at some of these cool boats like David and Leanne Branton's 59 Cigarette Tirana, the AMG boat. Six Mercury Racing 450Rs is the standard power package for this boat. Uh, that'll make her run close to 80 miles per hour. And you can see the Brantons have got a whole crew on board enjoying this poker run, and that is the boat to do it with. But you can see there's still a lot of activity here at Gilbert's as all the boats are coming in and getting tied up. And this is kind of a routine that you guys are getting very, very good at. And I always urge captains 
to delegate to your crew. Help them out. Tell them which lines to use, what vendors to use. And when you get a good, well-oiled machine working with your crew, then it makes it so much easier to come and go here at these uh, stopovers. Now, today we're not really going to have any issues with how far out uh, the boat's raft, but occasionally they can get out 8, 9, 10 deep quite easily, and that sometimes happens uh, because we don't make good use of the space. Uh, if you have these big gaps in between rows of boats, like we see right here, that kind of a gap of maybe 10 feet, well, if you do that five times along the dock, that's 50 feet you just lost. That's another row. So it's important that when you tie the boats up, that first of all, you try to find a boat that's equal in size or length to your boat. And then when you do tie up, uh, you make sure that the rows are tight. And this way, we're going to keep a nice configuration along the dock. A big boat like this 50-foot cigarette, well, now that they have the finger piers here at Gilbert's, uh, since they redid the docks completely, uh, we recommend anything that's 45 foot or bigger to try to get into one of those slips along the fingers. That's a much better solution to our docking format here because it keeps the really big boats off of the bulkhead space. It allows us to have more rows and it keeps us from pushing the boats really far out into the channel. Understand that with the concerns about the current here, uh, that is a big part of our mission to keep those rows from going out far because we could really have some serious incidents here. If these strong currents were to be pushing on the transoms, uh, it can create a lot of torque and a lot of stress on the boat rows. And we don't want to have any damage here. You guys bring a nice big boat in like this 48 NPI Team Good Boy Vodka, and you don't want to have any fender benders. You want this boat to stay nice and clean, no scratches, no nicks or chips in the paint. So taking the extra care and caution to properly fender and tie the boats up is really an art form in my opinion. And I think if you're a poker run guy, it's all part of the learning curve. Coming in pretty hot here with Chris Colson in this 39 foot Levy craft, but you see he had his crew ready and he used the current to get himself into position here. Sometimes you just gotta let mother nature help you. Uh, but look at the guys in the green shirts uh, on the dock, ready to fend off and grab the lines and get him tied up safely. And just a little secret note, guys, if you do not wish to deal with this wind and currents here docking at Gilbert's, you can always look around the backside. There's plenty of deep water docking there with very little wind and no current. Fast forward about one hour. We've all had a great lunch here at Gilbert's thanks to their staff who were very prepared and the wonderful buffet that they served. Uh, it's about time to leave though guys because we have a long ways to go still. It's exactly 109 miles from Gilbert's to Key West Harbor and perhaps even a little longer if you consider the course that we're going to be taking. Uh, so that gives us really about two hours to get to Gilbert's safely and for those of us who still need to get fuel it could be even longer than that. Uh, Chris Matting Lee pulling off the dock in his outer limits uh, getting out and getting a start here uh, heading along the protected bay waters uh, down to Marathon. Now some of the boats have decided that they're going to stay in Marathon, but we'll address that a little later in the episode. Meanwhile, we're just worried about Johnny L getting his MTI fired up and getting off the dock safely without any dings or scratches. Same thing with Tommy Friend here, and you see how he just nicely backed the boat out, fended the boat off, and instead of fighting with that current, he's backing down current, and that's the key because if he tried to turn his stern into the current there, he probably would have whacked the front end of that 48 MTI with the nose of his boat. That was a textbook docking departure, in my opinion. I would have to say that Michael and Sarah Howe are just loving their new MTI 390X. It's their second one, Lightspeed 2.0. Uh, their first one was a 34 cat. Actually, they had two 34 cats. Now this 390X Mercury Racing 450Rs. Very, very happy with the boat and very avid boaters. I mean, they actually left the Florida Keys to come up to Miami to join us so they could turn around and go back to the Keys. Robert and Chrissy Lockyer in their 40-foot Mystic Cat. They're spending a lot of time with the house. They do a lot of boating together. And uh, nice to see people in the club who, you know, eventually bond with one another. And you see these couples hanging out all the time, and I think that's fantastic. I love seeing the camaraderie and the relationships that come out of this organization and from these poker runs. You know, and to me, that's what it's all about. Sam Gabriel getting ready to pull off the dock and uh, David Branton uh, on the dock actually giving him some direction on how to get out safely. And Guys, look at this. This is going to be a textbook 
departure like we saw earlier. Understand that the current is coming in hard on the starboard side, on the right side of the boat. And if he tried to turn the boat, he would have whacked the front end of David's <laughs> Serrano. So David was like, I better give him a few pointers. But by turning and going with the current, the stern of the boat just followed nicely and swung out to the starboard side. And that's really what you wanted. You didn't want to get up close to that Tirana. Imagine how much damage you could do putting these two boats together uh, in a scratch fest. But clearly that's not what happened. Nice job by the Gabriels. And we've got them turned around now, pointing in the correct direction, and that is towards Key West Team Raging Bull, 48-foot MTI, once owned by Gino Gargillo. Uh, but it's found its way back on this poker run. And most of you who follow this sport would recall this is the first Lamborghini-themed MTI. And it's nice to know that the second-themed MTI, the 52 Super Veloce, is also on the run. And later in the run, we actually got the two boats together, and it was absolutely epic. And we're now catching up with the Wittenbergers on On The Rocks 3. The first one was a Donzi. The second one was a Sonic Center Console. On The Rocks 3 is a 39-foot Cigarette Center Console. Triple Mercury 350 Verados. I think it's the ideal package for John Wittenberger and his family. Uh, Tracy seems to love the boat. They redid the interior completely and got it all tweaked out and ready. This, of course, being the first poker run for the Wittenbergers on their new cigarette. And while Dad has hit the throttles and headed south, it's now Junior's turn. John Wittenberger Jr. in his 30 Spectre with twin Mercury 300s. A team bad decisions. But I would just like to say that alternatively, today was a good decision to take this ride because the weather is certainly clearing and the next leg of the run to Marathon should be a nice ride for everybody. So let's talk about that next 60 mile ride from Key Largo down to Marathon. Uh, it's all on the backwaters and the protected bay waters. Uh, it does require some careful navigation, but you know, as long as you can read your Garmin GPS or at least team up with a couple of other boats, we don't really mind if people spread things out and we don't really condone you know, the activity of putting you know, 15 or 20 or 30 boats all together and just you know, plowing through the mangroves at high rates of speed. That's not what we're going for. This next leg, you have to just chill out and relax and enjoy the scenery of the Florida Keys and, you know, kind of leave the hot rodding for the final leg into Key West. So it's okay that some of the boats have already left and there's still a handful of teams here on the docks at Gilbert's. That's perfectly fine because we'd rather see a continuous flow of boats uh, going out of Gilbert's and doing this final leg uh, for so many reasons, for safety reasons and also for the purposes of getting good photo and video remember we still have a helicopter flying and we want them to be able to spend a little time and get everybody some good coverage looks like chris did exactly the right thing also he didn't try to turn too hard he would have swept his stern into that dock he stayed straight uh, before he took his turn to starboard and kelly and anna crace in their skater all the way from arizona amazing that they came 2600 miles to be here one way and I think it's a great storyline that Kelly took all those years to uh, take this boat and transform it into the monster that it now is with almost 3,000 horsepower under those hatches. And while we're talking about skater projects, certainly Michael Tandoy falls into that category too. This is a 40-foot skater that was completely redone, re-rigged, and uh, it's got a pair of Mercury Racing 860s, so he kind of went a different direction. Instead of some custom-built giant uh, supercharged 572s, go with a crated Mercury Racing 860. Very reliable, uh, comes with warranty. But then they kind of stepped outside the box uh, with a transmission and an harness and surface drive. So that's what makes this boat truly unique. And the moment that I know you've all been waiting for is to get a great shot of that huge 59-foot Tirana in action. David and Leanne Branton, uh, seasoned Florida Powerboat Club members, they have truly made boating their chosen lifestyle on so many fronts uh, with all their collection of power boats and yachts. And a very graceful turn to starboard uh, as David exits the docks here at Gilbert's. Uh, looks like uh, Walter, his first mate on the back there, tying up some lines. Uh, great crew, longtime friends with the club. Uh, enjoy having these guys along. And what an amazing ride, that 59 cigarette Toronto as we wrap things up on this episode number two with feature coverage of the 28th annual Key West Poker Run, the 2020 Escape from COVID edition, uh, where we managed to have 160 teams join us 
for this annual pilgrimage to Key West. We've got plenty more shows coming. Next episode three will feature the continued coverage of our Wednesday departure group as our Poker Run teams weave through the scenic Florida Keys from Key Largo to Marathon in the shadows of Hurricane Ada, which is still looming off of the Florida Keys in the Gulf of Mexico. You guys don't want to miss another episode of this Power Boating and Paradise feature, so be sure to subscribe to our channel. Click that notification bell so you get an update every time a new episode is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events in 2021 as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page and you guys know who you are and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We have got a fantastic year planned for 2021 with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. So stay with us. Meanwhile, we're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right. And always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.